What we're covering today is a scary reminder to all family channels that you should be very careful with what you do and what you post of your children online. Because overall, this is just a horrible situation. It all revolves around the family of the TikToker by the name of Savannah Glenbin. Her and her husband thought it was a brilliant idea to saran wrap their child and film it and post it on TikTok of him struggling to get out of the saran wrap while they were standing around and laughing at the kid. From what I could tell, this was some sort of punishment from the kid being rowdy and for some reason, this was just posted on TikTok. I'm not going to show this clip because I'm not going to spread this any further for the sake of the child. In the clip, the father even started like picking up the kid in the saran wrap and kind of like throwing him around on the bed, like playing around with him. Overall, it looked like the kid was just struggling and having a bad time. And now there's one thing to just do that to your kid, but there's a whole nother thing when you do that to your kid and film it and then post it online for other people to enjoy it. I've been very critical of family channels in the past, and this is definitely way over the line for what you should be posting on the internet. And we've seen a lot of sketchy stuff from family channels, ranging from Daddy of Five, which was the worst, to Eight Passengers, to La Familia Diamond, the LeBrant family, and even elements of the Ace family. As a parent, your job is to protect your kids, not to wrap them up in saran wrap, have them struggle around, then film them and post it on the internet for everyone to see. It's disgusting. This video triggered enough backlash to where a bunch of people reported this to the CPS. And what happened next was the CPS showed up to their house and took away the kid, which is traumatizing for everyone involved. And what's sad about this situation is there is no win here at all. The family vloggers were being irresponsible with the kid. They posted themselves being irresponsible with the kid and CPS reacted very quickly. And while that video was not a good video at all, I do not agree with CPS just outright removing the kid right away based off of only that video. I feel like that was an overreaction unless there was something else going on outside of that video. But the TikToker made this video after the CPS took the kid away from them. And I do want to add a trigger warning to this. This is not a fun topic at all. This is a really, really sad story for everyone involved. I don't even know um, how I'm going to start this. Right now, we're dealing with a situation where Gunner has been taken from us until CPS can evaluate our home. I posted a video of my husband and son playing. That video was strewn in a way as two people thinking that we were abusing our child. One Gunner was like laughing and smiling and it was just a funny thing that Hank did um, because Gunner was getting into like the stove that day and like tried putting a fork in a socket and um, like Hank like playfully wrapped him in cling wrap. He ha had room to move. Like he looked like a little worm, like a little cucumber. He was at no point in distress. See, this is the massive issue of posting clips like this of your kid. The internet isn't aware of all the context around. All we see is a video of a kid struggling and you guys kind of making fun of him while he's struggling and clearly not having a good time. How they even thought it was okay to post that to begin with is baffling to me, let alone do it to the kid. But here we are. She's now posted that clip and millions of people all around the world are worried for the kid. Crying or anything like that. Like we would never hurt our, our son. Like we would never hurt our, our child. He's, um, the best thing that has, like, ever happened to us, and, like, uh, yesterday, so, like, I posted that video, like, two days ago, and, like, the response that it had gotten was positive, so, like, I didn't even know, like, that somebody had thought it, it was bad until yesterday when a cop showed up at our door and separate, separated us as a family like we went down and like made our statements and thinking that like gunner was gonna like be returned to us that day um and that like cps would do their investigation and see that our home is safe um and that we meant our child no harm i don't know what to do this is an absolute nightmare for any parent and a straight up self-report on their part. I guess this is what happens now that we live in the social media age. More sketchy behavior that parents do to their kids is now going to be brought up into the limelight simply because they wanted to post it themselves. Whether to stay quiet or post a video or like private my my uh, social media because of the amount of hate that I'm getting. I don't know what the right thing is to do or to say. All I, all I can say is that my son still loves loved and cherished and he's my miracle baby like he's my 
was my fourth pregnancy after three miscarriages and he's the light of my life. I'm confused in why she's posting this video to begin with. Like her posting the first video of the kid already lost her the public opinion. If anything, at this point, she should lawyer up. She made a mistake. Everyone makes a mistake. If this is a one-time mistake, there should be a way to get the kid back. Overall, it's just a terrible situation. I'm sad that it even happened to begin with. And I am... Um... Like some people are, 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 are taking this video out of context and like not even knowing Hank or I, I make zero money off of my, off of my social media. My, my TikTok is not monetized like at all. I don't make any money off of my kid. I just post little vlogs sometimes and like little pieces of like our life together. And, um, I just feel really helpless in this situation. I feel so dumb for posting, for posting that and like thinking it was just like a cute family video. I just feel incredibly bad for the kid that had to go through all of that just because of his mother's social media posting habits. And that's again, if it was a one-time thing. Because at the end of the day, the internet doesn't know what's going on in that household. All we see is an out of context clip of a, a kid not having a good time. So we only know what they're sharing on their social media platforms and it's really not making them look good as parents. Now, if this is not a one-time thing, this was a massive self-report. And then it turning into this. It's, I know that people are gonna are gonna hate me or like just like have opinions on this and like I understand I absolutely understand that. I just want people to know that like I I love that little boy more than anything in the whole world and I would never hurt him. Never ever and neither would my husband. We made a mistake. And we don't deserve to get our child taken away because of it. Overall, this is just an awful situation. I mean, this is sadly what we get in this social media generation of having to post everything online. But in good news to the family, they did actually get the kid back because they posted a TikTok with a caption saying, CPS cleared us of wrongdoing and determined our home with us is a safe one for our son, despite a hard lesson that was learned, a mistake that we will never ever make again. This weekend was extremely traumatic for us as a family and we will be taking time away to heal. Yeah, this is... Oh. I, I feel so bad. It really just goes to show how finicky CPS can be. Then you have some cases where they do nothing at all, where they maybe should, and other cases where they do way too much when they maybe shouldn't. This is a rough story to cover because I can really feel my heartstrings being pulled at here. But I feel like I need to cover stuff like this as well because people really need to think before they post stuff on social media, especially when it comes to their kids. Because as a parent, it's your job to protect them, not put them on display for the entire world to see, especially if it's a video of them struggling or they're visibly not happy. There was nothing in that original video that was funny or cute whatsoever. This should be taken very serious and never repeated. But hey, at least they didn't have to repay $30 million like this influencer had to. So uh, click that video if you want to see what happened there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.